this particular problem can be expected for section C. As far as your notes is concerned, this is problem number 3. From the following figures, compute machine hour rate for machines X, Y and Z for a 4 week period, which means it's on a monthly basis. Each machine is expected to work for 216 hours. So for 4 weeks, this particular machine is going to work for 216 hours. So how many machines are there in this problem? There are 3 machines, X, Y and Z. The following expenses are rent and rates 30,000, lighting 4,000, depreciation 20,000, indirect wages 20,000, power 12,000, sundries 30,000, canteen expenses 2,000, repairs 8,000. The total would be 1,26,000 and they have also given us other details. Under other details, they have given the table. I have already told you this table is going to help us in apportionment of cost. So, before going to the table, first we will calculate depreciation, power and repairs for X, Y and Z. Because depreciation, power and repairs are variable in nature. So, first we will calculate that uh, as far as individual machines are concerned. After that, we will look into the table. So, the first step here would be working notes for machine hour rate calculation working notes so under working notes you are going to take particulars x y and z under particulars this would be a uh, just a dummy table for your calculation purpose there is no such format prescribed for this it's just for your calculation purpose so first depreciation depreciation is 20,000 rupees and this depreciation has to be apportioned on the basis of cost of machine. So what is uh, the ratio as per cost of machine? It is 25 is to 15 is to 10. You can further solve it for 5 is to 3 is to 2 as well but I have just retained as it is. So depreciation, so it would be 10,000. 6,000 and 4,000. So, the, I have apportioned depreciation on the basis of cost of machine, cost of the asset and it stands at 25 is to 15 is to 10. Now, I will be calculating depreciation per hour. So, if you have to calculate depreciation per hour, you are going to divide it by machine hours. So, what is, the, uh, what is the number of hours? It is 216, 216 and 216. So, I am just dividing this individual amount divided by number of hours. So, it stands at 46.29, 27.77, 18.51, 18.51. 6,000 divided by 216, 4,000 divided by 216. Now, after this, the same procedure I am going to follow for power. What is the power expense? It is 12,000. And this 12,000, on what basis am I going to apportion power? Power would be apportioned on the basis of actual power. So, power is actually given in the table itself. So, you don't have to find out any ratio as such. You can directly write the given values. It is 5000, 3000, 4000. Now, I am going to find out per hour basis. So, divide by machine hour. 5000 divided by 216. Again, 3000 divided by 216, 4000 divided by 216. So, which means per hour power rate would be 23.14, 13.88 and 18.51. Next, repairs. Repairs, the total amount for repairs is 8000 rupees. And I am going to allocate repairs on the basis of cost of machine. So, repairs is apportioned on the basis of cost of machine. 
So what is the ratio for cost of machine? Just now for the depreciation, we have calculated. It is 25 is to 15 is to 10. You can have simplified ratio as well. Not an issue. So the total amount would be 4,000. 2400 1600 and what divided by machine hour so machine hour again i am taking it at 216 216 and 216 now per hour it is going to be 18.51 11.11 and 7.40 so with this, we have calculated, first we have apportioned depreciation on the basis of cost. After apportionment, we have divided by number of machine hour. So we have got depreciation per hour for X, Y and Z. Next, power. Again, the power is apportioned on the basis of uh, actual power and we have divided by the number of machine hours. Next, repairs. Repairs, we have apportioned on the basis of cost of machinery and we have divided by number of machine hours. So, we have got repairs for one hour under every machinery. And next step, whatever we are going to do is with regards to calculation of machine hour rate. So, the actual calculation begins now. So, I have already explained you under machine hour calculation, what are the two different charges that we are going to have? One is we are going to have standing charges. Then we are going to have variable charges. Isn't it? So you can just take down step two calculation of machine hour rate. Under calculation of machine hour rate, we would be having two different charges. So the first charge would be standing charges. The next charge would be the variable charges. So how many columns we have? Two columns, particulars, amount. Amount, you are going to denote it as rupees. Under particulars, first you will have standing charges or fixed charges. So, under standing charges, except depreciation, power and repairs, rest all we are going to have under standing charge rent and rates so what is the rent and rate total value rent and rates the total value is so for amount here we have got how many machines three machines so for each machine we are going to have different columns so machine x machine y and machine z i am uh, writing as x y and z so rent and rates it is 30000 so again rent and rate would be apportioned on the basis of area occupied so it is 2 is to 4 is to 6 so i'm going to take the ratios as it is i don't want to complicate things so 2 is to 4 is to 6 if you apportion 30000 in the ratio of 2 is to 4 is to 6 it would be 5000 10000 and 15,000. Next, lighting. Lighting would be on the basis of, lighting would be on the basis of number of light points. So, what is the lighting uh, expense? It is 4,000. And what would be the ratio for number of light points? It is 20, 60 and 120, which is nothing but 2 is to 6 is to 12. Now, what would be the amount for individual machine? It would be 400, 1200, 2400. Next, indirect wages. Indirect wages, we are going to apportion indirect wages of 20,000 rupees on the basis of direct wages and the ratio would be 4 is to 6 is to 5. And individual machines would have 5,333.33 rupees 6,666.67 so you can round it off or you can keep it as it is so 5,333 and 6,667 you can have it in that way as well next sundries sundries 
have to be again allocated as per direct wages. So total sundries value is 30,000 rupees. So just now for indirect wages we have found out the ratio it is 4 is to 6 is to 5. So if we apportion 30,000 and 4 is to 6 is to 5 ratio it would be 8,000, 12,000 and 10,000. Right? 8,000, 12,000 and 10,000. Next canteen expenses. Canteen expenses it stands at 2,000. And for canteen expense, we are going to apportion on the basis of number of workers. Canteen expenses should be on the basis of number of workers. And the ratio stands at 2 is to 4 is to 4. And the total amount would be apportioned in this ratio format. Which stands at 400, 800 and 800. After canteen expense. Uh, the rest all expenses and I have already explained you direct wages should also be considered in the calculation. So direct wages all the direct expenses must and should be considered in the calculation. So direct wages the amount is 40,000, 60,000, 50,000. Okay. So, the total standing charges, the total standing charges, so the total standing charges stands at 59,133.33, 92,000 and 84,866.67. Next, if you can calculate standing charges per hour. Divide this total in divided by 216. So 59,133.33 divided by 216. Divided by 216. And you will be getting 273.76, 425.92, So standing charges, I've just totaled all the columns. After totaling the column, we have got the total standing charges. Next step, I am going to calculate standing charges per hour. So for that, total standing charges divided by 216 is what the number of machine hours that this problem has stated. So every amount divided by 216, we have got standing charges per hour. After this, the next one would be variable charges. So variable charges... Uh, what are the three items that we get under variable charges? We get depreciation, uh, repairs and powers, right? So for that, we have already calculated, right? In the working notes, we have calculated depreciation, power and repairs. We, have just, we are just copying the same, whatever we have done under working notes. So it is 46.29, 23.29. 18.51 for x, 27.77, 13.88, 11 for y, 18.51, 18.51 and 7.40 for z. Next, machine hour rate. So we can total all this four. And the end result would be machine hour rate. So the machine hour rate would be 273.76 plus the rest of the amount. It stands at 361.7, 478.68, 437 so this is how we have to calculate machine hour rate if we have been given with different types of charges. First step is to allocate the charges as per the basis of apportionment. In this problem, depreciation, power and repairs were given on a total basis. Now we have apportioned it for every machine on the basis of cost of asset for depreciation, 
on the basis of actual power for power and on the basis of cost of machine for repairs. After calculating every expense, we have divided by number of machine hours to arrive at the expenses per hour. After that, we have taken the same figures in the actual calculation. So, the second step is the actual calculation of machine hour rate. Under that, we have taken particulars and individual machines as three different columns. And first, I have included all the uh, standing charges. After standing charges, then we have taken variable charges. But variable charges were already calculated under working notes. But for standing charge, we have first apportioned. After apportionment, we have totaled all the standing charges. And then we have divided by the number of machine hour rate. But for variable charges, we have to first find for per machine and then include. Why? Because in variable, per unit remains fixed. The total amount varies. But for standing charges, per unit is going to be variable. But total charges will be fixed. See, the total charges would be fixed. Here, per unit would be fixed. So, that is the behavior of standing charges and variable charges. So, um, this would be expected for section C. Calculation of variable charges first. Then, taking the actual calculation. First, calculate fixed charge. After calculating fixed charge, divide it by the number of machine hours. Then you get standing charges per hour. After arriving at standing charges per hour, next take the variable charges, whichever you have calculated in the working notes as it is. Then total the standing charge per hour and all the variable charges, you get machine hour rate. So uh, the section uh, together, if we sum it up this particular chapter all together, we would be having two set of uh, uh, topics. One is you would be having distribution summary, machine hour rate calculation. So remember for primary distribution and secondary distribution together, you can be expecting for section C. For this type of problem again, you can be expecting for section C. But for section B, you would be uh, getting simple machine hour rate calculation problems like the previous one. Or you will be getting the only secondary distribution statement with primary distribution figures. For section C, it is combination of primary distribution and secondary distribution. In secondary, you have three methods. First method is ratio method. Second one is repeated distribution method. And third one is simultaneous equation method. After this, we have done machine hour rate calculation. Under machine hour rate calculation, Again, we have to first calculate variable charges after calculation of variable charges, then start calculating fixed charge and add on the variable charges that you have already calculated. So with this, we have come to the conclusion of fourth chapter.